it's James here from GoodGuitarist.com and in this lesson we're going to show you how to play Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. Now this song, I know it's already a few years old and I'm a bit behind, but in reality it's a great song. It's stuck around for a lot longer than most songs do nowadays and it's awesome. It's wedding season coming up. We're going to hear this at a ton of weddings. I'll probably have to play it at a few. So I think it's time to just kind of brush up on it and get it going. When I was researching for this video, I checked out a couple of different sources. There's the original music video, and there's also a studio performance. And if you just type thinking out loud in Google, it's a super popular video. It's probably like the second or third one. And it's just him in a studio playing it. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because in the original, he plays it in D. But in the studio version, even though it looks like he's playing a D chord, his guitar is tuned down a half step, so it actually sounds like D flat. So we're going to go section by section. The first bit is the verse, and the verse has four different chord shapes. First, there's a D chord, and he doesn't really play the highest string. He kind of just plays the second, third, and fourth string. Next is D over F sharp. So we can keep this finger down, use it as a guide finger, and we're going to place the rest of our fingers. This one just makes a D chord. So we kind of just swapped it out for that one. And then our first finger is freed up to play the second fret on the low E string. Once again, try to avoid the top string. So switching from D to D over F sharp. Next, we're going to play a G chord. And if you check out the acoustic version of this, he just goes like this to play his G chord. Just one finger. And really, this finger is muting the A string. And since he's finger picking, he's avoiding hitting the highest string. Or you could just touch one of your other fingers to it so that it doesn't make any noise. So he plays a G chord. And you can just play it any way you want it. It's going to sound like G regardless. But that's just the way he plays it, in case you're wondering. And then after that, he switches to an A chord. And for the A chord, he plays it like that. And normally, I'd give you the option to play it this way, but we're gonna add a lick to that A chord. He plays So you kinda do need to bar it with one finger. So we're, we'll review the chords one more time. He plays D, D over F sharp, G, and then A. And the way that we change chords, or the rhythm that we change them in, is quite important, because we're changing them on an off beat. It goes one, two and three and four and so one and two and three and four and and that's going from D to D over F sharp and it's the same thing for G to A one and two and three and four and so when you put that all together you get one and two and three and four and one and So his style is a bit of a mix of finger picking and strumming with the outside of his fingers and plucking with his thumb. So starting off with our D chord, we're going to play, we're going to skip the first string, we're going to go straight to the second string and we'll use our second finger for that, third string, first finger, and then our thumb on the fourth string. And then from there we're going to do a smack on beat two. And we have a video that goes over this uh, in detail. You can check that out below. But basically all we're doing is just bringing down our hand on the strings to make a smack sound. So one and two, and then on the and of two, D over F sharp. And our fingers, we're gonna have our thumb on the lowest. We're gonna skip that one. We're gonna put our first finger here on the fourth string, middle finger on the third string, and then our ring finger or our fourth finger on the second string. So we have these strings here. And when you're doing your smack, try to get these fingers as close as they can to those strings so that you can play it right away. Because one and two and it's pretty quick. It's right after that smack. Then we're going to play the root one more time and then do a smack. 
So for D, we pluck these three strings, one and two and three and smack. Then we'll do the exact same thing for G to A. So on the G chord, we can leave our fingers where they were. It's the same notes or the same strings that we're plucking as D over F sharp. So here, got those ones. And we're just going to play one and two. Switch to the A for and. And three. And then we do the lick. And on the A chord, we're just plucking the middle four strings. So it's pretty much the same as G, except we moved our thumb to there. So when you put that all together, I'll do it super slow. This is what it looks like. So once you have that down and you can change the chords at the right time, we're going to add a couple little bits. So the first thing we're going to add is to the very first chord, and that is a hammer-on on our first finger. So we're going to go from the open string to hammering on to the second fret. And that just makes the chord kind of come out a bit more. He either plucks these three strings, so we'll put our middle finger on the second string, first finger on the third string, thumb on the D string, on the fourth string, just like that. Or he just strums through them that way with the outside of his finger. And this string is muted. And the other little thing that we're going to add is a lick to the A chord. So we would have just finished playing the A chord, one and two and three and, and then on B four, we play a, a really quick hammer and pull off from the second fret of the third string. And remember, we're playing the whole chord, so we can't just play that fret. We have to hold the whole chord down with our finger. And we're doing a hammer on from that fret to the fourth fret of the same string, of the third string, and then a pull off. So it's all in one. Pluck it, hammer, pull. And that makes a triplet. Triple it, right on beat four. Triple it. And then we pluck the D string, which should be already held by our first finger. So when you play that in time, one and two and three and triple it and. See, it's really quick. That was even a bit slower than the recording. One and two and three and triple it and. So the picking for that, he actually plays that with one finger. He strums and does the pull off thing and then picks the fourth string. If you want, you could do it in a bit more of a controlled way by just plucking. We have our thumb on the fifth string, index, middle, and we're just gonna go. So root, both these strings, do the hammer on, pull off, and then pluck the fourth string. Cool, so now let's try that together. One, two, three, four. Next we have the pre-chorus, and for that we're going to have to learn a couple new chords. So first we have an E minor chord, then we have an A7, then we have a D chord, which we've already learned, and a B minor chord. Now B minor is a bar chord, and that is the most difficult chord in this song as far as physical strength is concerned. Um, there's a way around it though. We don't have to play it like a bar chord. We can actually just press down three notes from it. The second fret 
of the fifth string of the A string, the fourth fret of the D string, and then we're not going to play this next one. We're actually just going to let the bottom of this finger touch it a bit so it gets muted. And then we play the second, or the third fret, I mean, of the second string. And we're going to mute the top one as well. So even though we're strumming all five of these strings, we don't have to get these two. Just those three, and it'll still sound like a B minor chord. It's a B minor shell. It's like a kind of a framework of the voicing. We haven't really filled everything in. It's just the essential bits. If you want to learn the bar chord, we do have a series of videos that really in-depth teaches you how to get bar chords and how to navigate all along the fretboard. So there's a link down below. You can check that out if you want. Otherwise, let's move on and figure out how to play this. So first we go E minor and then we change to A7 and D. And that's pretty straightforward, just one, two, three, four on E minor, then one and two and three and four. And so it's the same rhythm as in the verse between the A7 and the D chord. We're going one and two and three and four. And. Next, we're gonna go back to E minor for four beats. One, two, three, four, and then A7 for four beats. One, two, three, four. So we're halfway through it. Next, we're gonna play E minor again. We're always kind of going back to E minor here for four beats. And now here, we're gonna go from A7 to B minor. One and two and three and four and. So it changes on the and of two, just like every other time. One and two and and then we go back to E minor for four beats. One, two, three, four. And here it's a bit different. Here we play A7, but we just build up. So we're just gonna play down strokes and we're gonna go one and two and three. So we just do a big one right on three. Otherwise we're just counting up. One and two and three. And that'll get us into the chorus. So the rhythm goes like this. We start out plucking the strings. And you can pluck any ones you want. You can hit the top three and the root, or these three. Not any ones, but either of those. And the first stroke is like this. Pluck, then we do an up stroke with our fingers. Just a really gentle one, just on the top few strings. Not on everything, just the top ones. So, and then smack. Pluck, up, smack. And then after that, we go root, so just a pluck with our thumb, root, and then down, down, up. And when you put it all together, and we're gonna have to switch between two chords in one strumming pattern, and that's on A7 to D during the pre-chorus. So we would go, same thing, pluck, up, smack, and then after the smack, you change chords. Up, root, down, down, up. So. So this is what a bit of the pre-chorus sounds like when you play it with the strumming pattern. Cool, so now let's try that together. One, two, three, four. So the last part we have to learn is the chorus. And the chorus is the chords from the verse with the strumming pattern from the pre-chorus. And that's all it is. And when you're playing the chords from the verse, you don't even have to worry about those little add-ons like the hammer on into D or the lick. 
You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You're just going to hold the chord shapes while you play the strumming pattern from the pre-chorus. And this is what it looks like and sounds like. This is what it looks like and sounds like. So once you've played through the whole progression four times, there's a tag or an ending on the chorus, and that's the maybe we found love right where we are. And what's really cool is that the words and the rhythm of the guitar part are exactly the same. So you just have one chord per word. So we're gonna play it in this order: B minor, A, G, D over F sharp. Minor, A7, D. And none of those chords are new. The order is new. Let's figure out what words each one of those goes with. So maybe, and then we on the B minor found on A love on G right on D over F sharp. And then this part it gets a bit quicker. Up until now it's been one, two, three. Four. Now we have it a bit quicker. Where we are. It's a really quick one from A to D. So you might need to work on that a bit. And it's pretty straightforward though, otherwise it's just where we are. Cool, so now let's try that together. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Alright, now that we can play along with every bit of this song, let's figure out the order that we have to play it in. It's pretty straightforward actually. The song starts out with the verse, then the pre-chorus, and then the chorus in the order that we learned them in here. And then they do that all again, so a second verse, second pre-chorus, second chorus. Then there is a guitar solo that happens over the chords from the verse. And after the guitar solo, there's a final chorus and then the song's over. So pretty straightforward, that's the order you can practice it in. Um, I recommend now printing out the lyrics to this song, writing the chords over top of it, so you might have to double space it or triple space it. And that's a really good exercise to kind of teach you the form. You could even like circle the lyrics from the verse and write the word verse beside it and then circle the lyrics from the pre-chorus. Do whatever it takes to kind of help you memorize the order that you're playing this in. Some of you might not even have a problem with it, especially if you sing the, the song yourself because I find that when you sing it, it really helps you just kind of keep it in order because the story of the song kind of does it for you, you know? So that's it for today. I really hope you got something out of this lesson. And if you did, I'd be super grateful if you took the time to subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, check us out on Facebook, on our website, get our ebook. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, anyways, have a good one. We'll see you next time.